so hello everyone and uh, today we will uh, try to understand that uh, a beautiful function which basically you say change the mathematical perspective okay so it's basically a function from a set to set okay i mean set to some set function so that's what we try to define today okay at first uh, we have to think about some definition that let's talk about x to the power y okay so why do you mean by that x to the power y so x to the power y means uh, basically it is the collection of all those functions okay all those functions such that uh, fx fy i would say fy fy basically uh, belongs to x okay so that's what it is for all those y belongs to y so all those functions satisfying this condition all right that is basically called x to the power y and the beautiful formula about uh, this kind of this kind of setup is that what is the cardinality of this okay means what is the cardinality of this set okay what is the cardinality means that how many points is there in this set and that is basically defined by that cardinality of x to the power cardinality of y so, okay so that's that's how it is let's talk about uh, 3 to the power 2 what do you mean by that so in basic way or in say like in, in in a school level way so we basically means this as nine okay we basically means nine but but like in higher sense or in some let's say broader perspective uh, the the perspective of this can be changed by this so what do what do you, uh, this means basically three to the power two or three uh, the power being raised to two what do you mean by that so let us just discuss that here so 3 to the power uh, 2 means we have to define some sets okay we have to define let's say a set a and to the power set b got it so all those functions the collection of all those functions satisfying this condition that a for b belongs to a for all b belongs to b got it so that is the collection of all these functions if basically from b to a or you can say that all those if that match from b to a okay the collection of all those functions such that this condition is satisfied that is basically denoted by a to the power t b to a and what is the cardinality of this set basically what is the cardinality of this set so if i imagine that b is basically let's say uh, let's just simply say that b1 b2 and you say a is basically let's say a1 a2 and a3 so here you see generally that cardinality of b is basically 2 so that's what we write here 2 and cardinality of a here is 3 so that's what the, we write 3 okay so from this perspective we can imagine in such a way that uh, the set this a to the power b has cardinality is basically 3 to the power 2 why because the cardinality of b is 2 and cardinality of a is 3 means 9 so the question is like this that how many functions are there from the set b to a of course directly we can say 9 is because the cardinality to the power power cardinality but today we will define a beautiful function from power set of something to some functional space okay that's the basic idea i have to guess this because this is not digital board okay the board is interrupting okay so let us think about uh, or imagine uh, imagine anything like uh, let's say what is uh, any, any any kind of set finite infinite maybe so just imagine a set a just imagine that this is not equals to pi just imagine this not equals to pi okay so now we will define something very very beautiful so we have to define a function phi we have to define a function phi that maps from basically power set of a to 2 to the power a as usual 2 to the what is what do you mean by 2 to the power a the definition is here all those functions that match from a to this single down uh, to this double down set 0 1 because this coordinate is 2 so that's why we write 2 here got it so how we can define the functions like this okay so to to define this kind of functions we need to introduce something some new concept okay just divide the board into part here we use a very special function which is called the characteristic function okay that characteristic function is very important to us 
So kinetic function is basically denoted by sometimes uh, sometimes called the the chi x. Okay, the chi x. And I think I forget the symbol of chi. Maybe this kind of symbol. Okay, yes, I can remember this. Okay, so at first you think about all those subsets of A. Okay, so A is basically set. So we have to think about all those subsets of S. That basically parts of A as usual. So what we do now, we define chi of let's say chi B. Chi B defined by this way, that it should be equal to one if chi B x basically if x belongs to B equal to zero if x doesn't belongs to B. Got it? So this is what is called the chi B function. Chi B means basically the characteristic function of uh, the set A. Got it? So you can see this is basically a very well defined map from the set A to uh, zero one. Got it? I mean you just uh, think about all those like say. Uh, all the subsets, all the subsets uh, of this thing, got it? Chi dx. So now from here, from here we can define a function phi like this, that phi b, got it? It's phi b. So phi b is defined by that way. Just uh, you take a set from power set of a, let's say b, and you define that that is chi b, got it? So you can clearly see that chi b is a function from a to uh, a to two. Got it. So this is very very special function for me, and this kind of special function, chi b is generally dependent by like uh, phi b not b. I think phi b this way, and all those b belongs to power set of a. Okay. So what is d basically? B is any subset of a. Got it. B is any subset of a, and you define by this way. Got it. And chi b as usual uh, is uh, basically belongs to here uh, from uh, zero one. As you know, and this chi b sometimes called the uh, Dirac delta function. I mean, Dirac delta function is kind of like that, not similar one, but kind of like that. So this function basically is uh, it is basically bijective function from this to this. Got it? From power set of a to two to the power a. Okay, this is basically bijective function. So these bijective functions are very important to us. So from since these two sets are basically in general sense bijective, so we can do this. The power set of a cardinality is basically equal to Two to the power a. Okay, that's it. From here we can define a very beautiful thing. That let's say talk about that a has cardinality one hundred. Okay, one hundred. Then the question is uh, the question is like this that uh, how many how many subsets you can have of a? Okay, how many subsets you can have of a? So the simple answer is two to the power one hundred. Also phi the set phi is included here. Got it? That's the most important thing. And from here we can generally uh, define any other things like this. So this is this can be proved basically uh, independent of Schroeder-Bernstein theorem, and this can be true for any set, for any set, maybe finite, maybe infinite, doesn't matter. So let us talk about that A is n. We know what is n, then set of natural number. So from here we can define. Uh, from here you can see that uh, when we replace A by n, okay. So then the question is that what is this? How much of power set of n? How much of power set of natural number? Means how powerful or how big is it? Is it? The question is the cardinality of this that should be equal to two to the power uh, the cardinality of natural number. Okay. In general sense, the cardinality of natural number is 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 let's say defined to be aleph not or sometimes say so cardinality of natural number is taken to be this kind of Aleph naught or Aleph naught, as you say. And what is two to the power this means basically two to the power Aleph naught. Got it? And the thing is that two to the power Aleph naught and only Aleph naught they are basically different. And this two to the power Aleph naught sometimes denoted by a small letter c. And c is basically called the cardinality of continuum. Okay. And in an axiomatic approach, you can uh, like uh, come up here and you can generally like say you can establish this kind of setup. In a book of uh, Sapiensky, it is done by axiomatic approach, but that is that is too much for me. I mean, that is like not in, in, in I mean not inserting in my in, in my head. That, that that basically too much. That axiomatic approach it has like long long lemmas, and then you have to prove that there are some postulations. So that kind of thing. So two to the power element not is generally equals to c. C is basically called the cardinality of continuum. Now you see that when you get natural number, it basically the I think not smallest one, but I think the simplest uh, countably infinite set in this world. 
is a set of natural number and you can see that when you take the power set means you take the all the uh, all the subsets of this set the collection of all the subsets of this set of uh, natural number n it is basically huge because you see that this 2 to the power electron which is much more bigger than uh, lf naught okay means it is bigger uh, bigger cardinality than lf naught so means that if you take power set of any countably infinite set it becomes basically uncountable okay this set is generally uncountable the power set of n you cannot count all those things because uh, its cardinality is c so in general sense there is like some theory uh, the first first uh, infinite and uncountable of sets and cardinality is beyond the c and the first uh, cardinality of an infinite countably infinite set is in a real account. okay so that's the thing and if you talk about this thing so then i would say like this for c there are so many beautiful uh, sets let's say 0 1 open interval is generally equals to cardinality of r is basically c not only that, but also the collection of all those irrational in any interval or in R, they also see. The cardinal of rational number is generally LF naught because you can basically enumerate all those rational numbers via this kind of natural number set. Means you can set up that kind of mapping because uh, the union of countable collection of countable sets, they are basically countable. So the cardinal of rational number is not that much, it's only LF naught. So means rational numbers, uh, there is nothing in rational number basically. The amount of uh, the amount of uh, number is not that much, but for irrational number it is too much. So that's the thing. This is the function which I'm talking talking about. Uh, that basically changes the game. That is basically game change. I mean, beautiful function like this. So I love functions. In in upcoming videos, I will explain some different type of function that from let's say from zero one you can go to r, and there are so many things like you can apply the the tangent function from zero one to r. You can you can go that. So thanks everyone for watching.